Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the International Fact Checking Network, our Spread the Facts Q&A uh, for our latest grant opportunity. Thanks everybody um, for coming. Um, I'm Angie Drobnik holan I'm director of the International Fact Checking Network, and I'm here today uh, with our IFCN team, as well as a couple of representatives from META, and we hope that we are going to give you all the information you need to consider this grant opportunity, and we'll have time at the end to answer any of your questions. Um, so with that, I will get started with some welcomes and review our agenda. Uh, I think we have a slideshow uh, to bring up. Um, great. Uh, so just to do some quick introductions, I'm here again with the IFCN team. Uh, our key people working on this project are our grants manager, Deirdre Gonzalez, and our monitoring and evaluation specialist, Arena Lecht. And then we also have uh, Deputy Director Ferri Ozoy and our uh, Community and Impact Manager, Enoch Nyeriki. And behind the controls on the Zoom is our training manager, uh, Lane Dvorak. Uh, so that's the IFCN team. Um, from Meta, I will let them introduce themselves briefly. Uh, Karishma, would you unmute and say hello and introduce yourself? Yes, thanks, Angie. Hi, everyone. My name is Karishma. I'm on the fact checking partnerships team at Meta, and I also lead our WhatsApp program, uh, fact-checking program. So we're excited to speak to you today about the second round of grants. Um, and I'll toss it to my colleague, Claire, to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Claire Devey. I'm Director of Global Affairs for WhatsApp. Um, and I've been working with Krisha and team for the last year on the fact-checking program. And then more broadly work on cross-sector partnerships around using WhatsApp on everything from the small business app to the chatbot. So really excited to hear your questions. And Really excited about the grant this year and the evolution that it's taken. Great, thanks so much. Now, some of you may remember our previous uh, Spread the Facts grant opportunity, so this is a continuation of that. And to get into the details of the grant, the funding priorities, I will kick it over to Deirdre Gonzalez. Thank you so much. I appreciate everyone taking the time to introduce themselves and also for all of our attendees. I also want to just very briefly go over some of the overall specs of this particular grant opportunity. It is for up to 10 six month long projects, um, up to $300,000 will be granted. There are two categories and the first category is a $20,000 award category, which is for the WhatsApp business app. Or um, the second one actually is for $40,000 for the WhatsApp business platform. We're actually going to go into a lot more detail about that a little later in this presentation. Just to um, make sure everybody understands, um, we're looking to understand the WhatsApp functionality, as Claire mentioned, the evolution of how it's been used and how we may um, use it to increase the reach of existing projects enhance the experiences of the target audiences, and also look at some possible beneficial solutions for the broader fact-checking community. So the focus for this round um, will be on verification and response. So for verification, the projects um, are focusing, that are being submitted, will be focusing on developing new ways to identify AI-generated content that may be spreading through WhatsApp Business App the WhatsApp channels, and the WhatsApp business platform. The response actually focuses, focuses on how to leverage generative AI to optimize fact checker workflows on the WhatsApp business platform, utilizing the services of a business solution provider. Again, we'll talk a little bit of more, a little more about this later in this presentation. Um, fundamentally, regardless of which category um, that you may be applying to, we're looking for applications and proposals that will generate best practices and lessons learned so that we can share that with the broader um, audience to fact checking audience to help fight AI generated misinformation. So the $20,000 category is um, focused on verification. We're looking for proposals that, I, that develop 
strategies to identify AI-generated misinformation, preferably that's been submitted by fact checkers using the WhatsApp business app. We're also looking for um, consideration of how your project will pr be promoted through your WhatsApp channel or channels. Um, and also, again, case use. We're looking for lessons learned, what works well, what would not work well, and how what you learn can benefit the wider fact-checking community. The next category is the WhatsApp business platform category, the $40,000 category. So again, we are looking at verification. In addition to verification, this is where we look also for response, how you are using generative AI to optimize work, fact checker workflows on the WhatsApp business platform. Again, we're looking for what works well, what you've learned, and how that can be applied to the wider fact checking community. Eligibility. So we're looking, because you should be using one or the other of these WhatsApp features, you um, will be able to apply to only one category. You must be a IFC and Code of Principles uh, signatory with the status of active or renewal at the time of application. Also, you should be actually using WhatsApp business app or WhatsApp business platform. For the $40,000 category, you should be looking at um, utilizing your business solution partner. That's important because your business solutions partner actually has access to analytics that it's going to provide the data, data collection possibly, for you to include in your proposal. So applying to the grant, you will be able to go into the grants portal, the IFCN grants portal, and there are tiny screenshots here to show you that they're different in their titles and choose one of these to um, begin your application. You must make sure you're registered already at the IFCN grant platform. If you go in um, and you've forgotten your password, you've already been in our system for one reason or the other, please know that it's easy to reset your password. You don't have to actually reach out to us. You can do that through the actual um, portal itself. Each application will have um, the same tab sections that will be scored um, at 20 points. The questions are mostly the same, but there's some differences. We're going to go um, through the each of the sections. Um, we're not going to go through exactly what the question is, but more importantly, why we're asking the question and what the reviewers are hoping to see. Also, if you've already received a grant from us, this will not have any impact whatsoever on this grant opportunity. So um, that is not going to be an issue. Please um, consider this a resource guide. However, it also is a way for you, as we get through the sections, a way for you to understand what makes a solid grant application. Arena, what can we expect in the application itself? Thank you so much. So I am going to take you through the um, application, the tabs that you're going to see in each of the applications, and we'll discuss um, some of the components and um, what makes a solid answer. So. Um, as Deidre mentioned, the application sections are worth 20 points, but there are three sections that are not scored. And these are the tab that says start here, then the applicant information and the organizational background. And those are the first three. So um, start here, this is for you to read very carefully. It again reviews the eligibility for the application for the track that you're in. So to make sure that if you're mean to apply to the WhatsApp business app and you ended up in the WhatsApp business platform application that you see that right away before you begin uh, completing the application. The application information asks for basic information, mostly contact, um, for your organization. So for example, some things that you might want to have ready are the title of your project that you're proposing, the full name and the URL of your organization, as well as contact person name and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, email address, as well as the authorized legal representative for your organization. And then for the, for the WhatsApp business platform, the $40,000 category, the BSP, um, your business solutions partner, contact information and name. 
Now the last category, and I apologize, we actually called it executive summary, I believe instead of organizational background uh, in this uh, in these applications. But um, it asks just for basic information to tell us a little bit more about who you are, how you got started, how long you've been a signatory, a signatory, and any other information that you may want to share with us about your experience, specifically in this section, you might want to talk about your experience using WhatsApp business platform um, and any previous relevant experience. I will say that if you have received the WhatsApp, um, the Spread the Facts grant before, that will give you relevant information, but it does not actually have any uh, bearing on the scoring for this round. So it's not necessarily going to give you an advantage or a disadvantage. The only thing it does is probably give you some relevant experience that you can share in the application. But you don't have to have had uh, received Spread the Facts back in 2023 in order to apply for this grant. Uh, again, the eligibility is having a signatory status of um, uh, active or in renewal, and current use and familiarity with um, either the WhatsApp business app or WhatsApp business platform. So now we get into the um, sections that are scored. The first one is the statement of need. And the purpose of this is to understand uh, what are the issues that are being faced, who is facing them, who is your target audience, uh, and you know what is going on in um, in the setting where you work um, in, that this grant may be of help with. Um, and we want to understand who, what the audience is that you're trying to serve. It could be everyone, it could be specific ages, it could be specific language. And um, how are they impacted by the issues? Why, why, do you, why is this grant going to be helpful to you? So a tip is be as specific as you can be instead of saying, you know, our audiences have challenges. List the challenges. Tell us exactly who the audience is um, who's facing the problem. If you have any data or any um, information to back up your statements, please include that in there. And then one of the tips is that this section, Statement of Need, should be clearly linked to the proposed activities um, and the goals and objectives, which are the sections that are coming up a little bit later. So we want to make sure that the application from beginning to end tells a story. So there really shouldn't be anything in this section that is not addressed later in the activities or does not help us understand why the activities that you're proposing are helpful. Um, this section is really helps the, uh, the reviewers understand the why. Why are you applying? Why is this grant important to your organization? The organizational capacity, the 20 points, is the opportunity for you to tell us a little bit more about how you have been dealing with the issue that you told us about in the statement of need, and also um, tell us a little bit more about your experience using the appropriate WhatsApp platform. And by appropriate, I mean that if you are applying for the business WhatsApp uh, uh what I'm sorry, WhatsApp business platform that you're telling us about that experience and not WhatsApp in general, that you're telling us about your experience using uh, WhatsApp business app and channels as opposed to, you know, anything else um, if you're in the WhatsApp business app application. So again, the organizational capacity, the type of things that you tell us about should be really linked to the action plan or the activities that you're up going to be telling us about. Um, it should also show us that you have the capacity, so the number of staff that you have or the type of um, technical expertise that you have or are able to get, that you are able to implement the project as you're proposing it, that there's not going to be a huge learning curve. And that's mainly because this project, again, is six months long. So it's not a lot of time. Um, so we really want to see an application that shows us a project that can be implemented right away that will not need three, four months to get started. So action plan that I've mentioned several times. This is where you're telling us what you're going to be doing. So uh, the purpose is for the review reviewers to understand the strategies and the activities that you're proposing to address the problem that you told us about before. 
So as far as the objectives are concerned, if you have applied to previous um, applica uh, previous grants with IFCN, you will recall that a lot of times we are asking you to develop your goals, your objectives. This time, we will not be asking you to do that. As Deidre walked us through the focus of the grant, we have very specific things that we want the grant to accomplish. So we are laying out, we're telling you what are the objectives are that um, you can select from. You don't have to meet all of them, but we're letting you know what the goals and objectives are, and it is up to you to select the ones that you think are your project is going to or your activities will address. And if your activities don't quite address them, then um, the activities are the ones that are going to have to be uh, changed ever so slightly because the uh, objectives and the goals are set. Um, so one of the things that we want everyone to focus on, as Deidre mentioned before, is to for whatever you're doing, for whatever you're proposing, we really want you to think about how are we go how are you going to uh pull out the lessons learned, either something that works well or something that does not work well, something that the community can learn from. Um, so we really want this project to not just be a benefit to the organization that's applying, but also to be able to share those lessons with a broader fact-checking community, many of whom may be considering using WhatsApp for business, WhatsApp business or may have some experience with it. So um, a tip is the action plan should be clearly linked to the goals and objectives, and those are in the same section and provided for you. One of the other things that we're asking you to do is to let us know um, what are some of the barriers that you can come across? What are some of the threats, either for organizational or some things that you might not be able to control in your environment that may um, impact your ability to execute activities or implement activities as planned? And let us know what are some of the steps that you may have to take in order to get back on track or to mitigate uh, or lessen the impact of those threats. Um, you might not be able to think through all of them. Things happen, new conflicts arise, new issues arise, um, you know, in six months of implementation. But we really just want to see that you were thoughtful about letting us know um, what some of the potential issues may be and how you would be prepared to address them. So monitoring and evaluation section is probably um, one of the other sections that's very different between the applications, but always has the same purpose. The monitoring and evaluation section is asking you to let us know what are the measures that you can track to figure out, are you on track? And then are you successful? Did you accomplish what you wanted to accomplish? So there's a couple of ways in which we're asking you to do that. We're giving you some indicators that we know that you can um, figure out from the uh, by just being um, a user of the WhatsApp business app or WhatsApp business platform. Um, and so you can select the ones that are relevant to your project. You don't have to pull all of them. And then we're also, because we don't know what the projects will be, what the activities will be, we're asking you to come up with some of your own measures that you can let us know about. And those may also, the sources for those may be just tracking the project. Uh, they don't, not all measures will necessarily come from WhatsApp. Some of them may be helpful in telling the story of what's going on. So in order to know what kind of things you can pull and if you, you know, if you can get them from the app it's, uh, itself, check out the FAQ section um, for WhatsApp and also speak to your business service provider for those of you who are using the WhatsApp business platform. They will be able to tell you what some of the measures are and some of the elements of the measures, which is an, another important category or um, element of the monitoring and evaluation section. So a tip for this section for an impactful and good answer is there needs to be a clear connection between the objectives and the activities and the m and &E section, the measures or the indicators that you're proposing. So if you are doing trainings, but you're counting number of website visitors, or WhatsApp followers, but the trainings have nothing to do with that, those you know, do not speak to each other. So be very thoughtful about, again, the section is just to help you and help us understand, are you on track? 
Are you doing what you are um, said you're going to be doing? And did you accomplish what you think you're going to accomplish? So that's really the, the point of monitoring and evaluation. So for the activity timeline and budget, uh, this will look very familiar to those of you who have uh, applied to previous grants. We use very similar templates. So if this is a review for you, please bear with us. So the first thing you must do when you um, click on the link that will take you to the document is download the template. Do not complete it online because one of two things will happen or both things will happen. If somebody else logs in at the same time as you, they will see your timeline. They will see what you're typing, which is not ideal. <laughs> the other thing that will happen as soon as you close this out, you will um, lose all of your work. So please download the, the templates before for um, the activity timeline before you get going. So as a quick reminder, this is a six month long project. So you're only going to have six months worth of timelines to let us know about. The start date that you should plan for is September 15th. So your project will launch on September 15th. And the last day of the project is March 14th. So those are the dates that we want you to be working with. Um, also, just uh, for your information, during this, um, this project, during Spread the Facts, we will be asking for two financial and two narrative reports. You don't about, One about halfway through the project, one at the end of the project. You don't have to put them into your timeline or into your activities because we will be taking care of that and we will be giving you the templates and the timelines and the training for that. So those the reporting elements do not have to be to um, IFCN, do not have to be part of your timeline. So, um, once you download uh, the template and complete it, uh, please upload it to the correct application section. So there's two, two templates. One is the activity timeline and the second one is the budget, which we will review shortly. Please make sure that you're uploading the timeline into the timeline section and the budget into the budget. It will just help reviewers to stay on track. Please make sure that the action plan that we just discussed or the activities is connected to this, that there's not new information here that is not clearly linked to the activities that you're proposing. Now, if you want to do a survey of some sort or a poll and that's not part of the activities that you described, please make sure that is listed in your activity timeline and the budget because that could be linked more of like a monitoring and evaluation activity rather than activity to meet your goals and objectives. So um, the timeline should really uh, reflect everything that you are planning on doing and it should be described clearly enough that the reviewers don't have mystery items like what what is this for or it should not have huge gaps so if you're telling us that you're going to be doing a training this training these trainings need to be listed in the activity timeline and you can let us know when now you don't have to give us you know this is going to start on October 12th but it but the activity might not actually start until a little bit later. We understand that this is a um, uh, an approximation, a best guess of when you're going to get started. We just want you to think through how long the activity will need to take and approximately when you're going to get started. So we will not be holding you to the exact date. We might just you know, figure out if something is, you know, a month or two late, which is kind of big in a six month project. So, um, and here as with all, um, with all of them, you will see, I don't know if you can see my cursor on the screen here, we ask you to give us the start date and the end date. We prefer um, the month, day, year, but if you choose to do year, month, day, just please be consistent so we can tell how long something is going to take. And then um, just let us know the duration by completing this, um, just letting us know how long the activity. So one activity could be three months, one activity could be one month. Um, and now for the budget. So once again, please download the template, save it with your project name on your device, and then begin completing it. Um, we know that you your expenditures are likely not going to be in US dollars, but the budget should be. So please make sure that you use the correct uh, currency converter uh, or for exchange rates, uh, because we will be asking for the uh, this budget and financial reports to be in US dollars. So whatever um, 
you choose whatever service you choose to use for uh, currency conversion, it's probably best that you stick with that for the duration of the project. Excuse and me, again, Marina. I'm yes. sorry. I'm just just to note out a point. Um, you will not be using all the categories in the budget, and that's fine. This is a standard budget. Um, the other thing is too, if you are having trouble uploading either one of these templates into your application, there is a section in the application under both pieces where you can state that, that you had difficulty uploading that. So um, in that event, I need you to email me, um, make sure you tap that in the application, but also email me um, directly. And I will ask you to send that particular template to me directly so that I can share that with the reviewers. Um, so just to let you know, don't panic. We can, we can always work around some things. Thanks. Absolutely. Um, so, um, one of the other things, uh, much like in the, uh, activity timeline, no big surprises here. So we should not see, um, a line item for something that the reviewers cannot connect to the activities that you proposed or to your activity timeline. So make sure that the activity timeline, the budget, and the activities that you proposed all speak to each other. So they're all connected. Again, think of this application as telling us a story. And all of these chapters really need to be connected to each other. So the story makes sense. Um, so um, the last thing that I wanted to share with you. So those were all the parts of the application. So we have five scored parts and three unscored. Um, so um, for the application, it is currently open. We're currently hosting our Q&A, and that's kind of the, the first bullet point here. The application will close at 11.59 p.m., so in the evening of July 8th. So you have a little bit of time. We are keeping this application open for about five weeks. Um, because we know that some of you may be traveling to Global Fact or have other things going on. So we wanted to make sure that everybody can uh, have a very thoughtful and thorough you know, application. Um, the review will take just about as long. We will um, be sharing the details of the review committee um, shortly, but um, not in this presentation, but it will be put up on the website. Um, but. IFC, first, what happens is IFC and reviews application for eligibility. So that means that, for example, if you had trouble uploading something, that we get that information from you before the reviewers start reviewing it. As Deidre mentioned, that's not that's not something that will, you will be penalized for because we know that people have connectivity issues or just technical issues. Um, we also make sure that you know you meet the criteria, uh, which one of them is being an IFC and signatory. Um, we will be holding an orientation session for application reviewers at the beginning, right before they begin the review, and that's to ensure that everybody is on the same page. So that insurance that ensures that everybody is reviewing things with the same criteria. So it's really fair and standardized um, across all of the reviewers. Um, so once the score, once the applications are reviewed and the scores are compiled. Um, there's final award determination, and the awardees are notified via email and contracts are sent out. So that will be sometime in August. Um, those are, who are not awarded will also be notified. So you will not have to wait you know, into November to figure out what's going on with the project that's supposed to start in September. You will be notified uh, for those who uh, may apply and not get it. Um, so once we notify the winners, we make the announcement on our website. We, um, you know, cross our T's and dot our I's. So all the contracts are signed, timelines are solidified, budgets are finalized. And then for those of you who apply and are successful, we will hold an orientation sometime in September um, to make sure that we're on the same page about uh, reporting, financial and narrative reports, that you have all of the templates that you need and that you understand the processes of how payments will be made and are, we can answer any questions about how the next six months are going to go. So again, the launch of the project um, for your 
uh, activity timeline and also for your planning is September 15th through March 14th. So resources to know. Um, again, the applications close on July 8th. So please plan ahead if there's some people who you need to talk to who are on vacation or you know that you need to reach out to technical folks outside of your organization, you have until July 8th to do so. Uh, again, this is a six month long project starting September 15th, ending March 14th. Um, this Q&A recording will be made available on the Spread the Facts uh, website. So the IFCN website where you also went to register or some of you may have gone to register for this webinar. We also have some wonderful resource links from um, WhatsApp, and we will be sharing those in the um, FAQ, which will also be posted on the website um, sometime end of this week, beginning of next week. Um, these are hyperlinked, but since we'll be sharing a recording, you won't be able to click on them, but they will be hyperlinked in the FAQ document. So you will be able to get to them and read through, um, you know, if you're interested in learning more about what some of the features of the WhatsApp business platform are that, you know, you might be using it, but there may be more features that you're not aware of that you want to uh, maximize. Um, the, some of these links will be very um, helpful as well as understanding how you can measure the success of the project, what kind of measurements are available to you, and also some strategies that WhatsApp um, has come up with that would be useful, could be useful to your projects. As always, you can email us at info at ifcn.org. Now, please put the subject line for not spread the facts, the overall grant, but the specific track that you're applying for. This will help us figure out uh, or answer the questions a little quicker. So either your subject line should be WhatsApp business app or WhatsApp business platform. So again, the $20,000 one is the WhatsApp business app and the $40,000 track is the WhatsApp business platform. Now, please apply only to one of these two categories. Even if you have experience with both, um, please apply only to one. So please submit only one application. Um, if you submit one application to each track, we will, you know, I'm not sure how the determination of eligibility will be made, but you won't be eligible to be considered for both. So just one application. And please keep in mind, I know we've repeated it a thousand times, but we really want to make sure that um, we are uh, sourcing the lessons learned, that we're able to share this with the community. So whether it's great successes and things that work, or things did not go well, and this is why, or um, anything, any, anything that you can share from which the community can learn, whether it's what to do or what not to do, which is equally as important sometimes, we want to know. So as you are uh, developing your application and developing your strategies, please keep that in mind. That's uh, a really important theme in um, Spread the Facts in 2024. So I've been talking for quite some time. It is now time for us to uh, do some Q&A and I will hand this back over to Angie. Thanks so much, Irina and Deirdre. That was super informative. I will give um, our representatives um, from Meta a chance um, if they wanna make any comments before we get to the Q&A. But before that, let me just say you can send your questions through the Q&A function, or you can put them in the chat, uh, and maybe even you can raise your hand, but um, uh, please use whichever uh, method you find most convenient for yourself. Um, Karishma, do you, would you like to, having heard all of that, do you want to make any comments before we go to the Q&A? And then I'll also ask Claire as well. Yeah, thanks, Angie, and thanks, Deirdre and Arena for that presentation. Um, I know it was very informative for myself, and I'm sure for 
many of the fact checkers here. Just some context on the spread the facts grant. Um, I see some of you who applied to the previous grant and those who may be thinking about applying again or new ones. Um, and I wanted to share some context on it. Um, when we initially had launched the grant, it was for fact checkers to launch on the WhatsApp small business app and scale on the WhatsApp um, business platform to address misinformation. And as the misinformation evolves, we thought this would be a great opportunity to empower fact checkers to combat now AI generated misinformation. So we're really excited to speak to, to you today to hear about um, any questions you may have on this new round of grants. And Claire, is there anything I missed that you wanted to also cover here? No, I think you covered it all. I'm happy to go over to Q&A. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, we have one question in the chat from Jacob. Uh, can we apply for the grant even if we do not currently use WhatsApp Business App? If not, would we be eligible if we start using it before submitting the application? I'm not sure who would be best to take that question. So, Hi, this is Deidre. Um, thank you for the question. It is a valid question. Um, however, if it, because it's such a short period of time, we have six months to dig deep into this type of a project. Um, if it was a 12 month project, I think that we could probably um, change the eligibility um, criteria a bit, but unfortunately you need to have um, been using the WhatsApp so that you understand the features and functionalities and where you can enhance and innovate um, what you're already doing. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. I hope that information is helpful. So they would not be eligible if they're not okay. using the business app. That's okay. correct. Okay, let's see. There's a couple of questions in the Q&A um, from Claudia. Um, if we are a BSP, can we apply with several organizations, including our own? And in parens, it says Maldita, and she notes our BSP is, is Botolite. Um, I, Karishma, do you, uh, I don't, I don't quite understand this question. Sorry. Yeah, someone... of course. I, I'm happy to hop in. Um, okay. yeah, we, we support collaboration across sectors and organizations. So if there is like Maldita, for example, were to apply as an IFC and certified signatory, um, and the collaboration is with BSPs and other organizations on one of the tracks, I, it would be eligible. Deirdre, let me know if there's anything else um, you'd like to cover on that one. Actually, yeah, there is, um, the primary has to be, primary applicant has to be a signatory. However, there is a section in the application that asks, if you're going to be collaborating with other organizations, please state that. If you're going to be using a business solution BSP provider, um, please make sure you um, include their information. So there is room for that. Um, how long, this is from Anonymous, how long should we be using the WhatsApp business app to be eligible? What if we are quite new, a month or so? If you've been using it for at least a month, um, I would say go ahead and apply um, because your project, you may have had the level of expertise, especially if you're um getting information from analytics that can show where you can improve, I would say definitely go ahead and apply. The reviewers will be looking at your existing uh, experience and seeing how you want to scale that up. Claire, you had input? Yeah, I was gonna add the WhatsApp business app is very easy to set up and start running with. So that's the free version that you download. So I think the barrier to entry to get it up and going is quite low, so it probably would work. The business platform takes a, a longer time to get up and running and you work with a solutions provider and it takes a bit more work to get it set up. So I think that would be more challenging if you hadn't got the business platform set up. Right. Um, let's see, I don't see any other, let me, I would like to ask a question for Karishma. Um, what, are you seeing any trends or topics uh, through the WhatsApp business that uh, that you could talk about? I know we talked about the 
call mentions AI generated content. Um, for people who are just looking at this grant opportunity and thinking like it's intriguing, um, I'm going to explore it, but I'm not sure where to go. Um, do you have any ideas or thoughts for, for those types of signatories who are um, maybe not sure where to start on their idea generation for activities? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I can share some things we've heard of from backtracking partners that perhaps could be helpful on like what they're doing and something you could think about as well. Um, there are fact checkers who they worked in a consortium, though, granted during the India election um, to surface AI generated misinformation, specifically deep fakes through um, a WhatsApp tip line, which was on the WhatsApp business platform. So one idea could be considering doing that for the small business app, or if you're already on the business platform, um, creating a menu item in your chatbot to uh, surface like AI generated misinformation so that you can develop a solution to better fact check that. Um, then there are fact checkers who are leveraging AI kind of to optimize fact checker workflow. So you may be doing this yourself or have heard of it from other fact checking partners who are um, exploring using like LLM or large language models to um, better pull information from a data repository to um, quickly respond to users um, on their fact checking tip line. Um, so that could be another thing to think about. Claire, did you want to add anything to that or? Yeah, I think that's really good framing by Karishma to think about like the pros and the cons of this. So how do you mm -hmm. surface the things that are out there to better understand them? And mm -hmm. I think what we do see is that the challenges of misinformation continue. It's just that it is being presented in a new technology. So as seasoned fact checkers, you all have great experience in dealing with that, but finding these ways that you can start to surface this AI generated content or what this is changing for the industry, I think is a really good opportunity. I think with that, you also have a good, uh, with the small business app, the chance to integrate channels into that. So think about how you can share the information more broadly that you're able to get in. So you can look at that as the technology. And then with the platform, as Karishma said, these LLMs and thinking about how do you make it as easy as possible for people to find all the fact checks you have. I'm, I'm really interested to see what people are able to do with that type of technology to speed up the process and take some of the burden of the work um, of doing the fact checks, if that can help us there. I see um, I see one more question in the chat. Let me get to this. This is from Abdul Karim. Can an organization working on other sustainable projects apply for this grant, even if this will be their first fact checking project if successful? I'm not, Deirdre, I'm not sure how that would, I mean, how that would fall in line with the criteria that you have to be a signatory? Yeah, so there's a little more clarification needed. Um, signatories are actually fact-checking organizations, so they've already been doing fact-checking. So if you're not a signatory for this particular grant, you would not be eligible to apply. Hope that information is helpful. Okay, I think I've gotten to all the There's questions. one more, I think. Um, there's a question about uh, if, um, oh, there was w one question, I think maybe it disappeared, but I do want to address it, that um, if somebody's applying for the WhatsApp business platform and their BSP, somebody else may be using the same BSP, that is absolutely okay. Uh, we, there, uh, the BSP that is um, shared on the application, we may see the same one on several applications and that is completely okay. Um, we are only asking that the prime applicant is uh, submits only one application. So as you know, as a fact checking organization that's a signatory to the IFCN code of principles that is currently using WhatsApp business, either app or platform that you submit only one application as the prime. But uh, we do understand that there may be some uh, great organizations and great BSPs that uh, the community uh, may be aware of and they may appear on more than one application that is okay um the only eligibility as as the prime applicant that you only submit one application i hope that's um helpful to to those of you who were also wondering about that uh that question 
we know that for many of our signatories, applying for grants is a big um, commitment to uh, your resources, to putting time into the applications. We hope to make the process um, as uh, pain-free for you as possible um, while balancing our commitments to due diligence, to fairness, to thoroughness. Um, but as you go through the process, if you have questions, if you run into problems with the grant platform, um, please do reach out to the IFCN team. We are here to help you through the process. And um, we do think that we are um, improving our grant processes all the time. So we're eager to work with you and to get your feedback. And we wish you all the best of luck as you apply for this grant opportunity. Um, unless anyone else has anything they would like to add. I think um, we could just really quickly, sorry, really quickly, uh, please check on the IFCN Spread the Facts website. Um, next week, we will be posting more resources. And again, this recording will be posted sometime soon. So you can go ahead and, you know, review it and, and share it with others who uh, may be working with you on the strategies for this application. Um, and but yeah, as uh, Angie said, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at info at ifcn.org, but please be sure to put the track that you are or uh, that you're interested in or that you're asking a question about. This will just make sure um, that we are able to get to it quicker, as you know that, uh, or you may not know, we're working on a lot about uh, juggling a lot of different uh, projects right now. So this will just, you know, get our attention a little bit quicker. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or end of your day. Thanks for coming in um, from all around the world to hear about this grant opportunity. And thank you to Meta for joining us. Thanks for having Thanks us. For having us.